Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Orange Pi 5 Plus single board computer. Now this is one I've been waiting on for a little while because of all of the I.O. we have. It's actually jam-packed. We've got 40 GPIO pins, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, three HDMI ports. It supports an NVMe SSD, and you can get it with up to 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Now, Orange Pi has been putting out a lot of these boards powered by that RK3588. Most of them are smaller, around the same size as the Raspberry Pi, but this one is coming in a bit larger, Kind of on par with the Redaxa 5, but don't get me wrong, it's still a very small PC and it's actually putting out some amazing performance given that we're only working with an ARM CPU here. And of course, when anybody mentions single board computer, first thing that comes to mind to a lot of people is the Raspberry Pi. Give you a quick size comparison here. Uh, coming in actually a lot larger, but we are working with much more I.O. And speaking of I.O., I'll give you a quick look here. I'm just going to go over the major stuff. We've got our 40 GPIO pins laid out just like the Raspberry Pi, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, two USB Type-C ports. One is going to be for power only, but the other one is USB 3.0 Type-C, and it does support display out. So uh, we've actually got three displays out. One display input with that HDMI in, and depending on the operating system, basically you can do pass-through video, or you could do recording depending on the software. It does support a removable eMMC module. Unfortunately, no storage comes with the board itself. You will have to buy that separately. We've also got an M.2 E key for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And around back, we've got a micro SD card slot and another M.2 slot. This will actually support an NVMe SSD. It does PCIe 3.0 and you can fit a 2280mm M.2 in here. And when it comes to the specs of the new Orange Pi 5 Plus, for the CPU, we've got the RK3588. It's an 8-core ARM SoC. We've got four A76 cores, and depending on the operating system, these cores can run at up to 2.6 GHz, but most of the time they're going to be at 2.4. We also have four Cortex-A55 cores, and these run at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G610 MP4. The unit we're going to be taking a look at has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4 RAM, but remember they also offer a 4 and an 8 gigabyte model. None of these come with storage, so you will either have to use a micro SD card, an NVMe SSD, or an eMMC module. And of course, we can run Linux or Android. And when it comes to operating systems, we've actually got a few that we can choose from right now. Heading over to the Orange Pi website, we can check out their download section. Now there is one here that I really wanted to test out, but it's not available yet for the 5B. Orange Pi OS Arch. So if I go to downloads, it's just not here. Unfortunately, we just can't download that yet. But they do have their new Orange Pi OS Droid version, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. As soon as Arch is available, we will be taking a look at that on a lot of these Orange Pi boards. I'm really interested in it. It's been a couple months, and I was kind of expecting it to be available by now, but unfortunately it's not. Okay, so here we are with Orange Pi OS Droid. Now they do have a Linux version, but right now for the 5B it's not available. So right off the bat, I'm going with the Droid version. And by the way, I mean, this was already pre-installed and they've really tried to make this more of a desktop experience than just, you know, a tablet version of Android or even an Android TV version on this single board computer. It's a step in the right direction, but you know, it's definitely not quite there yet. As you can see, we've got our taskbar. And uh, this opens up just kind of like an app launcher, so we don't get that full screen effect. We do have multi-window support. So if I open up, let's say, the calculator, we've got full resizability. Uh, no snap feature. Would be nice to be able to bring that over to the side there. And right now, I am on a 1080p display. We can go up to 4K with this, but uh, I've just got it connected to my game capture. Let's open up uh, Calendar. So we can have those multi-apps open, multi-windows. Most of the time we see just kind of a tablet interface. And if we head over to our settings, display, we can change the resolution and the screen zoom or screen scale. We've also got a rotation feature here. In my opinion, for using a keyboard and mouse, it's definitely a lot nicer than just the tablet version. It's a great idea and they're definitely on the right track, but uh, we do need a little more out of this. We can access the GPIO directly from Android. And of course, when it comes to an app store, this doesn't come pre-installed with Google Play, but it's actually pretty easy to install. I was using APK Pure before that, but at least the English version of Orange Pi OS Droid comes with the Aurora Store pre-installed. 
Now I've got a lot to test here, but uh, the first thing I wanted to take a look at were just some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. And first up, we've got 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for that Mali GPU, 4,377. And the other one I ran was Antutu, just to kind of give us an overall score here. And this managed to hit 573,726. So it's on par with the other 3588 boards that we've seen. Actually, this is a little higher than some of the other ones, mainly because on the bigger course, it is running at a true 2.4 gigahertz. I've seen some of the other boards only clock up to around 2.2. Next thing I wanted to do was test out some native Android gaming. And first up, we've got Minecraft. This is one that uh, you could definitely play on this with no problem at all. And of course, we've got 16 gigs of RAM here. If you were looking to just run Android on this board, you could go with the 4 gig model and you'd be perfectly fine with everything you're going to see running in this video. But Minecraft is one of those games that runs amazingly on the RK3588. Asphalt 9, using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, runs really well. I was actually surprised because on some of the other boards that we've tested, I've seen some stutters, especially when there's lots of particles and effects on screen. But this is buttery smooth, and I am at the default settings with this game. I didn't have to lower anything to get this kind of performance out of it. And finally here for native Android gaming, we've got Call of Duty Mobile. And one of the big reasons I don't test Genshin Impact here is because you can't use a controller without a third-party app. But it will run at low settings, and it does run quite well. But Call of Duty Mobile is one of those games you can use an Xbox controller with. And right now, we're at high frame rate, high settings, and it looks great on this larger display. We're definitely running at full speed. Now it's time to check out some emulation, and we're going to go with N64. I didn't put any PSP in here because we've tested it so much on the RK3588. We know it works very well, and uh, even with the God of War series, both of the games for PSP, you can run at 3x resolution with that Vulcan back in. When it comes to N64, getting some great performance here. Even 007 runs at full speed, and I'm using Moopin's... Here's Kingdom Hearts 2 at 2x resolution using the Vulcan back in with the Ether SX2 emulator. This isn't a super hard game to emulate, but uh, yeah, I mean, it runs great. And even something like Gran Turismo 4 will run at 2x resolution. God of War needs to be dropped down to about 0.75. And even then, we still get some frame drops with that game, but you can always enable a few cycle skips. I'm in safe mode right now with both of these games that I tested, and they run amazingly. So overall, we've got a great performing little single board computer here with the Orange Pi 5B. And when it comes to the Orange Pi OS variants that they're offering, I'm kind of stuck here with Droid, but uh, I do like it. I think it looks good. It is moving in the right direction, kind of giving us more of a desktop oriented operating system with Android. But as soon as the Arch version of Orange Pi OS is available, we're definitely going to be testing it out. They do have more information over on their website. And obviously, this is going to be based on Arch Linux, which is something I love to see. But uh, it does seem to be a very easy to use, minimal operating system that should function really well on the RK3588. If you're interested in seeing what the Orange Pi 5B can do with that operating system, definitely think about hitting that subscribe button and turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at this little board here. We're getting some really great performance out of this board, and I know we've been seeing a lot of these RK3588 boards hit the market, but I thought this one was really interesting given that we do have a lot of storage options here and tons of I.O. when it comes to a board this small. One thing that would have been really nice is if this did come with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth pre-installed. Now we can always add it with that M.2 key up top, but uh, yeah, it just would have been awesome to have that already ready to go. But we do have dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet for some really fast speeds. If you're interested in learning a little more about this board or if there's anything else you want to see running on it, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.